Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming. Um, I'm here to introduce the idea of communi community supported agriculture to you. And uh, now, where I live over in West Cork, I was driving along about uh, two years ago and I spotted a field of oats growing. And it stirred me and it made me realise that I had not seen a field of oats growing since I was a child. The area over in West Cork so soils are very poor, but I still managed to years ago, even back just 30 years ago, it was growing thousands of acres of grain. Now, these three acres that I was looking at driving by was the only few acres that was growing in West Cork. So I realised, oh, maybe I could persuade some farmer or maybe get a group of people together to uh, contract some farmer to grow the grain. Also for me was I used to buy an awful lot of organic food, but all our organic food, most of it anyway, is imported. So for me, I made the choice, my own personal choice, was that it was more important for me to eat local food than to eat organic imported food. So we started the process as they went in in the movie there. Um, we managed to persuade two very, very brave farmers to come forward and try something very new. Um, there was a little, Dennis touched on a little bit of negotiations there. Um, if you decide you want to start a community supported agriculture scheme in your area, um, approaching farmers has its own etiquette and it's all a very indirect communication and uh, in Dennis's case it involved uh, sitting down for two nights and drinking a bottle of the white stuff and coming back the next morning to kind of remember what it was that we had, uh, we had agreed in the first place. But that's, that's how our, our, our farming community operates in many cases. Um, there's uh, the potato field. You saw from the movie how wild the sheep's head is. Um, but there are these little small fertile fields stuck in among the rocks. So it's, uh, crops can be grown anywhere, really. When the group of people came together, a number of them were, uh, had bought sides and had uh, attended this Simon Furley siding course, and they asked me, they said, can we, can we, can we learn, can we side the oats? So I, I suggested it to Dennis, I said, hey Dennis, some of these people want to side the oats, and uh, he sort of went along with it, and he said, okay, if that's what they want to do, so they can do it. And it turned out to be one of the most, for me, the most educational things about the, the, the Grain CSA. Um, we had uh, an old man, Charlie Donovan, who's about 77 years of age, and you'd swear he was 50. He's got a twinkle in his eye, and he, had, he hadn't sided oats for years, and he was able to show us some of the old techniques which they had. And more important, he was able to show us the old sheaf knot, which is a way of tying up the sheaves. And um, it was invaluable lessons, lessons that. And then once we had our oats, uh, we tied the sheaves, we dried all the grain, and then we organised um, a thrashing day where we all got together and uh, the old 1937 marshal was hauled out and uh, uh, we had quite a hooli afterwards as well as, as we should have. Now in our case with the CSA, the grain CSA was done very, very old style because most of us were interested in learning how to grow grain on a very small scale. Because you're talking of a half acre of oats being quite capable of feeding a family, plus the <coughs> chickens, and uh, so it was like a half acre of oats is quite easy to do using old techniques. Some CSAs or other CSAs uh, would be more farm gate collection, so, uh, and probably more cost effective. So if actually just getting the grain was what was important to you, it might be better to contract a conventional farmer to say, okay, we will buy a couple of tons of uh, our oats from you at the farm gate. You'd lose out on all this fun aspect of it and, and the learning aspect of it, but it's what we chose to do and it's what we wanted to do. Now, if you look at porridge, porridge is main staple of my diet anyway, a bowl of porridge every morning and uh, you look at uh, what the, the prices the farmers were, it wasn't the grain farmer made any money last year, they all lost money, no fault of their own. Um, an, or an organic grain farmer will probably get about 340 euros for a ton of oats. By the time it's come through the processors and the retailers to me and you, we're paying two, two and a half to three thousand euros a ton. 
So in our case, although we grew extremely expensive oats, if we were able to convert those oats into porridge, it actually becomes very cheap. Because what we're actually doing is we're taking, we're squeezing out the middlemen, which are the, the retailers and the major producers. So it's where a group of people have come together and said, we will be that middle link between the farmer and our plate. So that's, that's where we got. Now the potato yield um, worked out very well as well. Um, a lot more cost effective. It turned out to be uh, cheaper than you would pay for your organic, uh, way cheaper than you would pay for your organic potatoes in the shop and a little bit more expensive than you would pay for conventional uh, potatoes in the shops. And the potato yield was done on um, uh, a farm gate collection system. So there was, no, there was very little interaction with the actual farm for the people bar, just being able to walk by it. We were very lucky that the field that was on is part of the sheep's head way. So people were able to just put her by when they wanted to and check out how the spuds were growing. Now we, grow, we grew uh, Sarpo Mira potatoes because it was a middle ground between people who would be looking for an organic potato and conventional production. Steve is a, a conventional producer, so uh, the idea of him not spraying any spuds was, was kind of new to him. And uh, because we were growing Sarpa Mira potatoes, we did not need to use any sprays or whatever, so that satisfied our consumer group as well. <coughs>